INEX says it is putting in plans to take legal action against barrister Hudu Yunusa Ari, the resident electoral commissioner for Adamawa State. Hi, welcome to what's happening this at the top 10 stories. At number one, the Independent National Electoral Commission plans to take legal action against barrister Hudu Yunusa Ari, the resident electoral commissioner for Adamawa State for alleged electoral misconduct during the 2023 general election. INEC has received the investigation files from the Nigeria police and will use its legal officers to prosecute the offences. After carefully reviewing the case, INEC has decided to bring charges against Barista Hudu Yunusa Ari at the Adamoa State High Court. The trial is set to commence on July 12, 2023. INEC is collaborating with the Nigerian Bar Association to ensure a fair legal process for similar cases. At number two, the Kwara State Government has decided to go back to the original five-day working week for civil servants after previously reducing it to three days. Governor Abdul Razak Abdul Rahman reduced the number of working days to three days after the removal of fuel subsidy by the federal government. This was communicated through a letter from the Office of the State Head of Service, Mrs. Susan Modukwe Oluwale. The head of service has sent a letter to the heads of ministries, departments and agencies stating that the directive to remove fuel subsidies has been reversed. At number three, the Senate plans to investigate the concession of the Aminu Kanu International Airport and Namdi Azikiwe International Airport due to concerns about transparency. Senator Sumaila Kawu initiated the investigation, arguing that the concessioning process was flawed as the Ministry of Aviation does not own or operate airports in Nigeria. He criticized the decision to approve the concession of the Kanu Airport to Corporation America Airport Constituent for 30 years, stating it was a misguided decision. The Senate also criticized the low upfront payments received by Nigeria and the decision to give control of the airport to private companies. At number four, the chairman of the Kanu State's Public Complaints and Anti-Corruption Commission, Muhui Rimigado, has confirmed that a forensic analysis has proven the authenticity of a viral video allegedly showing former Kanu State Governor Abdullahi Uma Gandujay accepting bribes in the form of dollar notes. The video has faced scrutiny since it gained attention in 2017. Rimigado acknowledged the pressure to determine Gandujay's guilt or innocence, but the investigation faced challenges due to his immunity as the former governor. Gandujay initially denied the video's contents and took legal action to prevent the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission from investigating him. At number 5, as of the time of filing this report, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg announced that over 10 million people have signed up for Threads, Meta's rival to Twitter, shortly after its launch. The app is available on Apple and Android stores globally, except in Europe, where it has been delayed due to privacy concerns. Zuckerberg also playfully mentioned his rivalry with Musk and jokingly proposed a physical showdown between them. At number 6, President Bola Tinubu has signed four executive orders, including one that suspends the excise tax on telecommunication services and increased excise duties on locally manufactured products. The goal of these orders is to lessen the impact of tax adjustments on businesses and households in affected sectors. The President also signed orders to defer the start date of other tax changes, such as the Finance Act and Customs Excise Tariff. Additionally, the President has suspended the green tax on single-use plastics and the import tax adjustments levy on certain vehicles. At number 7, former Governor of Gombe State, Mohamed Goje, has taken legal action against his removal from the All Progressives Congress. Goje has appealed the court ruling that confirmed his expulsion from the party and has also requested a delay in implementing the decision. His appeal argues that the lower court made errors in conducting the hearing in his absence and relying on technicalities. Goje was suspended and later dismissed from the APC for allegedly engaging in anti-party activities, disrespecting party leaders and failing to participate in campaign events. At number 8, the Acting Inspector General of Police IGP Olukayode Adeolu Ebetokun has taken decisive action by disbanding a police team involved in an incident in Edo State. The officers responsible are facing disciplinary charges and administrative procedures. The disbandment is part of the broader efforts to improve the Edo State's police command and promote professionalism. The IGP encourages the public to cooperate with officers and aims to strengthen the relationship between the police and the community. At number 9, the governor of Ondo State, Rotimi Akaredolu, will be coming back from his medical leave soon. On Thursday, the Ondo State Commissioner for Information and Orientation, Pamidele Ademola Olataju, signed and released a statement disclosing this information. The commissioner revealed that the governor is in good mood and will return home once he is released by doctors. The statement expressed thanks to President Bola Tinubu, APC leaders and other state governors and the people of Ondo State for their support and prayers for the governor's recovery. 
finally at number 10 president bola tinubu is planning to announce new dates for the national population and housing census which was previously postponed in april the chairman of the national population commission nasi akwara revealed this after meeting with the president Quara also mentioned that there may be a need for additional funds as the delay in the census could lead to increased financial requirements. Former President Muhammad Bari had instructed the Commission to continue preparing for the census despite the postponements to ensure progress and establish a foundation for the future administration. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.